Hello and welcome back to another video about the Sony VAIO VGN X505, the $3000 sub notebook from 2004. In this one, we will upgrade the slow 1.8 inch hard drive to flash storage using an assortment of adapters. This is the 1.8 inch 20 GB Toshiba hard drive we would like to replace. It's slow, loud and from 2004, so not the most reliable form of storage. On this side, we have our three adapters. The first one is this. It adapts Mini IDE to Compact Flash. Since Compact Flash cards are limited in capacity and often expensive, we will use a Compact Flash to SD card adapter to make use of cheap SD cards. Since most cards you buy these days are not full size but micro SD cards, we need another adapter from SD to micro SD. Links to the IDE to Compact Flash and Compact Flash to SD card adapter are in the description. Now we can use any SDXC card in the VAIO. In this case, a 64GB card should be enough, but I also tried using it with a 256GB card, which also got detected. So now let's install it. After removing the back panel, we have to remove the flex cables for the ports and the hard drive again. Now we need to remove the flex cable from the old hard drive to connect to the SD card adapter thingy. I also had to desolder a jumper here since it made the adapter too thick. To stop the adapter from shorting out on anything I used Kapton tape on all the exposed points of the PCB. After plugging the flex cable into the mini IDE adapter, we can put the whole thing in and put it back where the hard drive belongs. I also put some Kapton tape here to stop it from rattling around. We can then close the back cover again. Now let's reinstall Windows XP again. For this we could just restore from an image I created of the old 20GB hard drive, but I want to do a fresh install. To install Windows XP we would need some kind of CD or DVD drive, since the VAIO can't boot from USB. But in an effort to make the VAIO as thin as possible, they had to leave out any kind of optical drive. So how can we install XP? Using one of the two accessories I have for this notebook. The first one is a PCMCIA CD drive. Now remember that Firewire port with a 12 volt output next to it. There's also a DVD drive from Sony that uses this connector. I've actually never seen a notebook that has a power output. But this is a genius idea. So we will be using the DVD drive since it's newer and also faster. So now we can finally put in the Windows XP install CD and start the installation process. Sadly, I don't have a way to capture the screen, so we just have to use the camera pointed on the screen. The footage for this is sped up, since it took a very long time to install, but you probably have all seen how Windows XP is installed. I just left it to install, and as you can see, it got dark outside before the installation was done.
So now we are finally booted into Windows XP. But we don't have any drivers yet. For this I downloaded a full 20GB version of the Snappy Driver installer. This can be downloaded on a modern computer and contains a set of thousands of the most common drivers. You can then use a USB stick to start a program on your old PC that you don't want to connect to the internet. I will leave a link to it in the description. So first, we need to let it scan for devices. After selecting the drivers we want, we can click on install and the snappy driver installer will do all the work. The cool thing here is that it works unassisted. So there are no annoying install wizards for every driver that restarts your computer at the end. You just have to reboot once at the end. After the reboot, you can hear that we now have sound. And as you can see, we are also running at the native resolution of the display at 1024 by 768. The next thing I did was to change the theme to the one from Windows XP Media Center Edition. I have fond memories of this theme since we used to install this on the school computers and thought we were super cool doing it. Now for the ultimate test, we would like to know how fast the boot up times are compared to the mechanical hard drive. As you can see with the SD card, we are done in only 27 seconds, while the old hard drive did not even show us the Windows boot animation yet. One reason for the slow performance of the HDD might also be that there are a few programs installed on it. Another reason might be that these 1.8 inch hard drives spin at only 4200 RPM and were considered relatively slow even in 2004. Wow, as we can see, this upgrade really made a difference. It also generally feels snappier navigating windows. There are no more delays when opening the start menu, for example. Now let's test a game and see if all drivers were installed correctly. We will play the mighty Need for Speed 2 SE. This was the first racing game I played back in the day and I still have my original disc. Sadly, the original packing got lost at some point in time. Let's do a quick race, of course using the legendary McLaren F1.
Let's skip forward a bit. Hey, at least I won. But yeah, the disk drive works, keyboard works, sound works, and the integrated GPU seems to be working as well. Loading times are also quite fast. So now that we have upgraded this machine, I will try to install macOS on this thing in the next episode to turn our Vio into a sort of MacBook Air four years before the original MacBook Air came out. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, especially how we're trying to hack and touch this notebook, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.